Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Realtree, Hoyt Archery, Fuse Accessories, Muddy Outdoors, Frigid Forage, Trophy Rock, Scentmaster, Cabela's, Rocket Broadheads, Bloodsport Arrows, Redneck Hunting Blinds, Scott Archery, Woods Zero Turn Mowers, Scentlock, Deer Grow, Quiet Cat, Execute Scent Control, Non Typical Wildlife Solutions, Yeti Coolers, and Nikon. Thanks for joining us today on Midwest Whitetail. We're at the tail end of the rut now, but we still have some good rut hunt action for you on today's episode. Caleb Byer shot another nice buck, and uh, Jared Mills is continuing to have some great action in his hunting area. Tonight, Drew and I are going back to the same blind where we hunted on uh, Wednesday, and Drew shot a doe, uh, be his first bow kill since 2009, so that was pretty cool. But also, the, the big news was uh, a Big Junior showed up back there that evening, and we had not seen that deer on the hoof since, I believe it was late December of 2012. So here's a five-year-old buck that uh, we haven't seen since he was three years old. So that's pretty cool. He's plenty big enough. Uh, he's got the age we're looking for. He kind of zipped in there, was chasing the doe, ate a little bit of corn, and, and uh, moved right on through before we could get it, before we get a shot at him. So we're heading back to the blind right now. It's a blustery November 30th, about a 20 plus mile per hour wind, and it's about 22 degrees out. So it's gonna be cool back there in the blind. So I'll check back at the end of the episode and show you everything that we see this evening. It is November 23rd here in Iowa. We're hunting a spot that we've kind of left alone all year. We didn't get any pictures of any big bucks during the during the summer or even into the pre-rut, but I just feel like this is a good spot to find some bucks cruising. You know, coming up up off a doe or even falling a doe, so it's a perfect south wind that blows out into this open field. You have a draw. It kind of comes and meets right here, and then all the deer kind of filter through here. This is a big bedding area, so um, then you got pasture this way. There's always a lot of deer that come up out of that pasture, so it's a really good spot. Um, just because we don't have a big buck on camera, you never know what kind of deer could show up this time of year, cruising, looking for that last last doe in heat. So we're gonna get settled in here, and uh, hopefully it's a good morning. It's, it's raining. Um, it's warmed up quite a bit, it's like 50 degrees, but I mean, it's that time of year. We're running out of time. We uh, we have two two tags to fill. I just hope I can uh, end up filling my tag this morning. We're gonna set as long as we can and uh, until we get soaked or the camera, it gets too wet for the camera. That happened fast. Oh. 
We had a doe come in. I was actually gonna shoot a doe. We need some meat for the freezer. But uh, I asked Taylor, I was like, did you, did you hear the drop? So I didn't shoot the doe. I kept looking, kept looking. You can't see very far because it's just starting to get light here. And it's foggy, raining. Get on that doe, I'm gonna shoot her. Thing on. You're sitting here. Taylor had the camera wrapped up with a coat. We had a, a small buck and a doe come down the hill, and I don't think she was ever able to get him on camera just because the brush, and then uh, we, only, we only see him for a split second. I look back and see this buck coming, and uh, he's just got a big frame on him, and it looks like he has a little tiny drop time, and I think it's a drop time. I hope it is. It's always been a goal of mine to shoot a buck with the drop time. He come chasing this doe, came into 20 yards, and I mean, he's dead at 40 yards, so that's a tribute to Rocket Broadheads right there. Now we got some meat for the freezer, so this has been an awesome morning. Can't wait to get down and get my hands on that buck. quite an incredible morning this morning. Uh, it started out with us actually contemplating even going because uh, when we were sitting in the truck it took off raining pretty good. We didn't want to ruin the camera trying to hunt so we decided to, we looked at the radar and decided it was go time so we got in a little later than normal but it was foggy enough it didn't really hurt us much. And then we had uh, this doe coming through and I had planned on shooting her and uh, then I heard a grunt, and sure enough, here this guy came following behind. And I'm glad I didn't shoot that doe because that would have probably ruined the hunt. But he came cruising through, and uh, just an incredible hunt. That's that says a lot about how your uh, season can change on a dime because this has been one of the most struggling, frustrating seasons we've we've ever had. So to be able to wrap my tag around a nice deer like this, I couldn't be happier to end my bow season. My quest for scar will continue in the late season, but this will conclude my bow season and it's definitely been a good one. Well, it's November 30th and I am doing a hang and hunt this morning in what is most likely my last morning sit of the season. Uh, from here on out, I'll start focusing on the food uh, and or where these deer are coming out to go to the food. So I figured I'd give it one last try this morning. Uh, while I'm sitting here, I want to give you a quick update on the last couple weeks of hunting for me. A few days after I filmed the bucks fighting in the creek, I went back down into that spot and uh, had a good encounter with a real old buck that we call Miyagi. We believe this deer to be seven or eight years old this year. Um, so very old, but still very dominant. Uh, as I saw that night, uh, he came and stole a doe uh, from another buck. It was just was very, very aggressive that night. He ended up crossing the creek uh, about 60 yards from me right at dark. A couple days after that, I was hunting a ridge that falls down in the same creek bottom and had another great encounter with Miyagi. My grunt call had froze up when I first saw him, uh, so I used a snort wheeze. He finished working the scrape and came right in on a string. Uh, basically came about 10 yards broadside uh, right in front of me. Uh, but unfortunately I didn't have a cameraman that morning. And I wasn't going to try to stop him because the tree that I was in was very open. Um, so I was hoping he was just going to stop on his own. I'd have time to get the camera set up and draw him back and everything. But he'd never stop walking. 
So I let him walk past me, uh, get out their ways, and I snort wheezed again. He came right back to my tree. Uh, this time I did try to stop him real quietly. Um, right. But as soon as I did, he looked right up at me. And obviously I didn't have my boat drawn back. I just got the camera set up. And uh, he didn't like what he saw, obviously, and, and kind of walked off. But uh, it was a cool encounter. Uh, just a, an ancient old deer. And I've had quite a few encounters with them now. After that encounter with Miyagi, I won a few hunts without having any real great sightings. Um, some good three-year-olds, a uh, good four-year-old eight, and then uh, an old mature deer that I, I just don't want to put my tag on. Um, but on November 26th, I went out for an evening hunt, and I headed out to a tower blind that's in a food plot. Uh, kind of a scouting mission, just so I can kind of see a, a long ways and kind of see where the deer are coming out. Uh, ideally head into that food plot and once you know it I see George Brett uh, come out into the CRP he mingled around and, and kind of fed out in the CRP never actually made it uh, to the food plot at least while it was still light and I was there uh, he may have uh, made it there in, after dark but that was my fourth encounter with him so I went home that night and started putting all the pieces of the puzzle together I went through all the trail cam pictures trail cam video studied which way he was going at uh, the different times and started making making marks on the map and I came up with what I believe is this core area with the most consistent spot and uh, the next morning I went and hung a stand in the dark uh, hoping to try to catch him coming back into his core area Well, it's Thanksgiving morning, uh, the 27th, and uh, Mike and I came in here basically for an all or nothing hunt uh, after George Brett. So we brought two stands in, uh, hung the stands in the dark, right after his break in daylight. Literally just got set up, uh, saw some bucks coming through the pines, and there were three of them, and George Brett was the third one in line. Unfortunately, the first two year old that came out he caught our wind and that's the one thing I didn't account for was the the havoc that these pine trees wreck on this on these winds. I mean you don't get a true wind. They they shoot down different tunnels and I didn't account for that. Um it was supposed to be a north northwest wind. I think if we were outside the pines we would be having that. But the way this is set up we got this east west kind of gap in the pines and the wind is just shooting straight down that blowing south blowing north but he caught the two-year-old caught our wind a little bit ran back towards George Brett and George Brett just kind of stood there you know he wasn't comfortable walking out but he, he definitely didn't have our wind he just ended up following them uh, going the other direction so unfortunately I think the best idea is just to get down before he happens to circle around and uh, actually get our wind and we do more damage now I know this is where he likes to come back to bed now. Uh, I just I confirmed that even more this morning. So it's definitely the quickest hunt I've ever had without getting a shot at a deer. But I think it's the right thing to do. So we'll start a game plan for the next hunt and hopefully we can get it done. Well, that's encounter number five with George Brett uh, without having getting a, an arrow released. And that's the one that probably hurt the most just because of all the effort and the strategy that went into that hunt basically picked the perfect tree uh, which is very hard to do I'm basically hunting 100 something acres of pine trees and the deer can walk and or bed anywhere uh, there's not a whole lot of terrain changes so um, they can kind of go where they want and to pinpoint one location uh, is an easy thing to do and we basically did it that morning it was kind of an uncontrollable factor in that swirling wind um, that prevented us from getting a shot so that was a little disappointing, but there's still uh, still a decent amount of season left. 
I'm actually in that spot again this morning. I did a hanging hunt just about 30 yards down, so I'm straight across where he was going to come out last time. Um, but it's getting a little bit later in the morning, so I'm thinking he either beat me back to bed this morning or he's bed somewhere else. So it's looking like it'll be a late season feeding pattern if I'm going to continue to hunt this deer. I'm excited to hopefully get back on him uh, here later in the season once the deer start uh, hitting these food plots hard and uh, hopefully encounter number six will result in Georgia Brett on the ground. I'll definitely keep you guys posted on how the hunting goes. We haven't seen a whole lot of action tonight. Just a single buck came out and uh, you know we had some raccoons out in the food plot but activity is pretty low and I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, it seems like the conditions would be good with the cooler temperatures and the breezy evening. But we'll keep hunting this coming week. And uh, you can follow my action on the video blogs on the MidwestWhitetail.com website. And I also post my activity uh, every single day on the Whitetail Watch site. So check them both out. I'm going to have this whole week of bow hunting and then next weekend will be the first shotgun season. So uh, I'm assuming we'll have some, some action at that time also. Um, that's it for this week. I uh, appreciate you joining me. We'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big. 